Good morning, folks. Today we describe the calm before the storm. The last 48 hours on our star have been very quiet. Solar flaring has been on a major decline. The sunspots have either decayed or refused to fire. We've still got fairly simple groups departing the Earth-facing disk, but even the gamma class I'll give to the trailing active region hasn't been able to produce. Seismicity is calm as well, with the top quakes being only in 5 magnitude range. It is indeed interesting, however, when you get some quakes straddling Australia. However, things are going to change the next few weeks, while comet sighting spring approaches Mars. Mercury is swinging in to geocentrically conjoin the Sun. After it conjoins Venus a day or two later, and right after our solar eclipse October 23rd, Venus will enter solar conjunction. Now in addition to discussing chemtrails, the future California desert, and sighting spring in yesterday's fly on the wall, Dr. Uyen returned to discuss how the planets shown there may set off both solar activity and earthquakes. Could be a fun October. Rounding up space weather, Earth took two gamma ray bursts last night, double tap from Lyra and Orion. The solar wind is slightly intensified in both speed and density, yellow and orange respectively, but thus far Earth's magnetosphere is holding firm with no instability. One of the top stories is this dark patch you should be able to see coming in down south. That's the southern negative coronal hole and is just days away from being Earth facing, ready to offer a minor earthquake watch as Earth slips back from positive to negative near Earth influence. Top news includes an addition to the NRAO's Milky Way Explorer. This one focused on the solar system and enhanced with insights from the radio telescope team. Having green algae balls wash up down under isn't something new, but this was an extreme event and scientists are not fully understanding the phenomenon. Weather-wise, we discussed the big counterclockwise driving low in the U.S., bringing storms followed by bitter cold. Right now, parts of both northeastern and northwestern Canada are warmer than the beaches and swamps on the Gulf coastline. Welcome to climate extremes. Snow fell in at least four states yesterday and hail came down in two more. This morning's frost and freeze warnings extend into northern Georgia. Meanwhile, the next flood alert for the U.S. Southwest begins soon as Major Hurricane Simon keeps gaining power and is heading again for landfall and intrusion. Be ready. Otherwise, it will be a slightly calmer day in most of the territory. Widespread thunderstorms at low level in the northern convergence and southwest edge of the system with some more snow and hail in between. Fan Phone and Vong Fong in the West Pacific. Fan Phone already battering the Japanese coastline with 42-foot waves. Low pressure back atop Iceland here. Convergence crests the western UK. Convergence also near southwestern Norway and a small low between Italy and Greece. The purple precipitation warnings tell the tale. Down under, we'll see the southwest under a moisture flow, while the convergence shifts from the north to the South Island of New Zealand. Top zones there with some scattered rain in between. Helio viewer still lagging, so we're at the SDO site for shots of our star to close. Eyes open, no fear, at 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.